भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टूडेज रीडिंग फ्रॉम ब्रिलियंट एज द सन रीटेलिंग ऑफ श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो थ्री पार्ट वन गोइंग टू बिगिन चैप्टर एट अपीरेंस ऑफ ब्रह्मा फ्रॉम विष्णु Maitreya says he will answer Vidur's questions by reciting the Shrimad Bhagavatam and assures him that anyone who attentively hears this literature will transcend material suffering. First he describes how he came to hear the Shrimad Bhagavatam. He then describes Brahma's appearance on the lotus coming from Garbhodakshay Vishnu's abdomen and Brahma's vision of the Lord. Verse one, Maitreya's heart swelled with happiness in Vidur's company. He praised Vidur with affection. The Puru dynasty in which you appeared is full of Krishna's devotees who are attached only to his personal form. Because you have such worthy ancestry in your company, I feel the Lord's glories are ever new at. every moment vidur bowed his head verse 2 maitre continued i shall answer your questions by recounting the beautiful pastimes of the supreme lord and his pure devotees as they first they were first spoken by the lord himself and passed down in the line of great sages this narration is known as Shrimad Bhagavatam. By hearing this Bhagavatam from a self-realized devotee, even those suffering extreme miseries for the sake of fleeting pleasures can get freedom from material entanglement. Vidur's face lit up. He had heard about Shrimad Bhagavatam and felt fortunate to hear it from Maitreya. <clears throat> Most people were engrossed in painful endeavors for the sake of minuscule happiness, identifying with their material bodies they engaged in worldly work, not realizing that they are only entangling themselves in suffering life after life. Now Maitreya was assuring him that even these people could become truly happy by understanding the Bhagavatam. It must be very powerful. Vidur was curious to know to whom the Lord had first spoken the Bhagavatam, and how it had come to Maitreya. Verse three and four, Maitreya said, "Some time ago, the four sage boy sages, known as the Kumaras, headed by Sanat Kumar, questioned, asked questions similar to yours from Sankarshan, also known as Garbhodakshay Vishnu." who lies at the bottom of the universe on the bed of ananta shesh the divine serpent the sages wanted to understand the truths of lord vasudev at that time sankarshan was meditating on vasudev his origin sensing the presence of the great learned sages and desiring their good he slightly opened his eyes verses 5 and 6 the kumars had traveled from the highest plains down to the lower region through the ganges the hair still wet they touched the lord lord's lotus like feet which the daughters of the serpent king worship with elaborate paraphernalia in order to attain good husbands The four boy sages glorified the Lord's activities in voices choked with love. Hearing their prayers, the jewels on Ananta's thousand-raised hoods began to shine. Verses seven and nine. Sankarshan then instructed the sages in Shrimad Bhagavatam. Many years later, Sanat Kumar narrated what he had heard from Lord to Sankhyaena Muni, who later spoke. it in a gathering of celestial sages
At that time, both my spiritual master, Parashar and Brihaspati, the God's preceptor, heard him. Blessed by Pulastya, my spiritual master was empowered to teach it to mankind. Thus I heard it from him. I shall now narrate those exact same teachings to you. You are qualified to hear this because you are faithful and obedient to your superiors. Vidur remembered hearing about an incident between Parashar and Pulastya, the father of cannibalistic Rakshas race. When a Rakshas ate Parashar's father Shakti, he initially sought revenge. He thus began a sacrifice to burn all the Rakshasas to death. However, requested by his grandfather sage Vashishtha, he forgave the Rakshasas and desisted from killing them. So now we know Sage Vashisht was the grandfather of Parashar and, and Parashar's uh, sage's uh, father was Shakti. This pleased. So however requested by his grandfather Sage Vashisht, Parashar forgave the Rakshasas and desisted from killing them. This pleased Pulastya, who blessed Parashar to become a great teacher of the Vedic literatures called Purans. So Pulastya, the father of the cannibalistic Rakshas race, he blessed Parashar to become a great teacher of the Vedic literature it's called Purans. Vidu listened with great anticipation as Maitreya began to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam precisely as he had heard it from his teacher Parashar. Verse 10 The thousand headed Ananta swam in the Garbhodak Vishnu, which filled the universal egg. Four armed Garbhodakshai Vishnu lay on him as if in slumber, his eyes half closed, he had given up glancing at his external energy and was now absorbed in enjoying his own internal potency. Verses 11 and 12, Vishnu had exerted his energy of time to destroy the three planetary systems. Now all the living beings rested within him in their subtle bodies as he lay in the waters of dissolution, he was unseen by the sages in the highest planets which had not been destroyed, just as the fire in wood is undetected. For 1000 yuga cycles, the Lord enjoyed his internal energy, experiencing bliss within himself. and remained indifferent to his external energy. Then he glanced at the living beings who lay within his body, arousing them by his energy of time or vidya. So Lord's energy of time is also called avidya, which deludes them into thinking they can be happy by enjoying the results of their work Due to this polluted mentality and their past sins, the aggregate combination of living beings appeared bluish. So nicely described here that the time deludes the living beings into thinking that they can be happy by enjoying the results of their work and due to this polluted mentality and their past sins, the aggregate combination of living beings appeared bluish. Verses 13 and 14 now. The Lord's glance then fell on the subtle elements that lay dormant within him and his time energy activated the mode of passion. The elements thus pushed through the Lord's abdomen and the creation began. Impelled by the awakened destinies of the living beings, the material elements took the form of a gigantic lotus flower which like the sun lit up the expansive water where the Lord lay. 
verses 15 and 16, this lotus became the Vidat Rup or the gigantic universal form of the Lord. Karbhodakshai Vishnu expanded himself as the super soul Kshirodakshai Vishnu to enter the lotus within which were the three modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. The first created being Brahma, the embodiment of the Vedic wisdom was then generated from that cosmic flower. From his seat in its wall, Brahma could not see any planets. Straining to look out into the space, he turned his head to the north, the south, the east and the west. By so doing, he attained four heads, enabling him to see in all directions. Verses 17 and 19. Devastating winds whipped the great Garbhodak Vishnu, or sorry, ocean, into fierce whirlpools seated on the trembling lotus. Brahma was confused. How had he appeared there? What was the lotus's origin? Where was the rest of the creation? He looked down. Surely there was something in the water below from which the lotus had sprouted. Completely bewildered, Brahma climbed down the hollow of his, its stalk, thereby entering the Garbhodak ocean. Still he could not see its source. Verses 20 to 22 now. Brahma held his breath and plunged deep within the waters. He searched arduously for a long time but found nothing. Vishnu lay nearby, concealing himself by his own potency. He smiled Brahma's efforts to find him. Without bhakti could never exceed, sorry, succeed. The four-headed god was baffled, unable to hold his breath much longer. He felt like he was about to expire. It seemed to him that Vishnu's fearful chakra that ends the life of all beings was approaching him. He needed to surface quickly and return to the lotus. The anxious god pushed up to the surface of the water and climbed back up the lotus stalk. So much for his being, the great universal creator, he could not even understand his own origin. He sat in yogic trance, controlling his breath and concentrating his mind on the Supreme Lord. After he had meditated in his humble mood for 100 celestial years, Vishnu became pleased with him and appeared within his heart in a splendid vision. Verses 23 to 25. Brahma saw Ananta Shesh lying in the waters of the Garbhodak ocean, his gigantic white body creating a bedstead on which Garbhodakshai Vishnu lay. The radiance of the jewels bedecking Ananta's thousand hoods dissipated the darkness his lustrous frame was more beautiful than an emerald mountain and his yellow dress looked more enchanting than the setting sun's rays bathing that mountain ananda's gold jewel studded helmet was more brilliant than a golden peak atop the mountain the jewels pearls tulsi leaves and flowers garlands which decorated the Lord's effulgent body were more charming than the streams, jewels, herbs and the flowers decorating the mountains. His transcendental form was unlimited in length and breadth, occupying all of space from the higher planets down to the lowest. All of his dress and ornaments were of unparalleled beauty and variety. Verses 26 to 28 Suddenly the exquisite form of Krishna, dressed as a cowherd boy, manifested before Brahma with one lotus-like foot crossed in front of the other. Revealing the auspicious markings on his soul, Brahma considered this vision to be the greatest reward for his meditations and the fulfillment of all his desires. Krishna reciprocated with Brahma's pure service and dispelled his anxiety to see him by smiling charmingly. The Lord's radiant face was enchanted by his bright earrings, red lips, graceful nose and moving eyebrows. From the Lord's waist hung a saffron dhoti, the colour of a kadam flower. Girdled by a gem-studded belt, on his chest was Srivat's mark and a priceless necklace. Verses 29 to 30, as Brahma gazed at him in astonishment, 
Krishna again manifested himself as Garbhodakshai Vishnu, lying on Ananta to Brahma. This magnificent form seemed like a colossal sandalwood tree. There were numerous similarities. As a sandalwood tree is decorated with fragrant flowers and branches, the Lord's body was adorned with valuable jewels and pearls, and the tree spreads its branches everywhere. Vishnu spread his arms over the universe as the tree's roots cannot be seen. The Lord's origin could not be understood as the sandalwood tree is the king of trees. Vishnu protects the world by his great power. As the sandalwood tree is covered with many snakes, so the Lord's Shoulders were decorated by Ananta's hoods. Just as both moving and non-moving beings rest on a great mountain, similarly all creatures rest on Garbhodakshai Vishnu and the thousand golden helmeted hoods looked like that golden mountain peaks. His transcendental body decorated with priceless jewels immersed in the water of devastation resembled a jeweled mountain submerged in the ocean. Verses 31 to 32 now. Brahma realized that this mountainous form was the Supreme Lord. So, the Lord, the beautiful garlands decorating Vishnu's chest sang melodious songs glorifying him. So this is the spiritual world. The beautiful garlands who are decorating the Lord, they also sing the melodious songs to glorify the Lord. His Sudarshan Chakra weapon Continually circled him. So the, the Sudarshan Chakra is doing the Parikrama of Lord. So that he, not even the sun, moon, air or fire could approach him. Searching for a clue to render, how to render his service of creating the universe. Brahma saw only Vishnu's deep navel filled with water along with the lotus flower which emerged from him as well as the devastating water surrounding him the blowing winds wind which was drying those waters and the sky last verse 33 now understanding these to be the causes of creation and infused by the modes of, mode of passion he became eager to commence his service still brahma was unsure how to begin thus he began to petition the lord with respectful prayers and this brings us to the end of chapter 8. Appearance of Brahma from Vishnu. We will begin chapter 9 next time, which is Brahma's prayers for creative journey, uh, creative energy. Thank you for joining. Wish you all a very blessed day ahead. Please chant and be happy and look after yourself. Hare Krishna.